This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, ladies and gentlemen. And if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, or even if you're finally seeing this on iTunes at long goddamn last, you'll notice that there's new title card artwork. Oh my god! <laughs> Yay! Yes! It does look really nice, I have to yes. say. I agree. I agree. And though she forgot to put her uh, credentials on the artwork, like she tends to do that with most of the other stuff she's done for me, but she forgot in this one particular case. This is by my lovely girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who has her stuff over at beckyhop.deviantart.com. Or no, I think it's Beck Hop. But either way, throw money at her at patreon.com slash beckyhop. That's the easiest way to do it, and she has links to everywhere. I'm going by memory here. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's probably laughing at me and calling me a little derp. <laughs> probably. Yeah, but, you yes. know, we, we, we do that. Uh, so, yes, as you can hear, my co-hosts, as always, are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello. Hello. Uh, and this week we're tackling a little bit of something we haven't, I think, we were discussing it before the show. I think last time I remember... Tackling something was when uh, Trayvon Martin happened, and Holly and I covered that on Thespian Talk. So it's been, what, about a year? Yeah. Since we've covered it at least in depth. Oh, so this is this is more like the whole right to bear arms NRA shit. Yeah, and if we get death threats for it, oh well, bring it on. At least with me. Don't, do not threaten <laughs> the other two. <laughs> yeah, send your hate mail to Gomer, please. Right, yeah, yes. just, send, just send it to him and... Yeah, I say bring it, because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say things that will probably piss off, you know, gun nuts and everything while I am sitting in a house that has got a decent gun cabinet. <laughs> so I'm a little safe. <laughs> but yeah. even if I was, and I'd still say bring it the fuck on, come on, you know. Would you scare me? Probably. Would I stop? No. So I don't know if it's stupidity or bravery, but we'll we'll certainly find out. And the, one, and the one thing that kind of brought this on, well, I had two stories based around it sitting in my queue anyway, and then Holly found this story for, out of uh, Sacramento. And yes, we mean the one in California, as opposed to the one somewhere else. <laughs> I was going to say, is there another one? I don't Sacramento, know. Sacramento, Utah? Huh? No. But, but I know there, <laughs> well, I do know there is a Graceville, I think, in Greece. I want to say so it's not out of the realm of possibility but but it, it, it's it's california anyway <laughs> so yeah and and we and she grabbed this out of uh, sacramento.cbslocal.com for those who want to go and actually look it up for themselves uh instead of looking at the fox news link that you'll probably find if you look up the the headline suspected yeah. teen burglars shot dead inside home by residents kids don't read fox news yes don't. yeah <laughs> Or if you do, don't take them seriously. Just look at it. It's like, oh, Fox Link, Fox News link. Okay, da -da 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 -da. check my sources. Yes, checking your sources yeah, is kids. It, check your sources. Yeah. Always check your sources. Yes, That's the most. Yeah, that that really is the most valuable thing you can do because nothing hurts. Real nothing is more embarrassing than posting something from like uh, Daily Current or Freewood Post without realizing that it's a satire site. Oh yeah, my mom yeah. gets caught. <laughs> like that all the time and she'll be sitting at the table and go I can't believe this mom mom you see that thing over here okay yeah that, this is parody <laughs> oh yeah yeah and, it's and cute. I've, I've had to pull out the Snopes links for a couple of people on my friends list several it's, times it's funny because if she sees something on Facebook then like she's pretty good at, at checking Snopes but for some reason if it's you know sent to her email or whatever then she's more likely to i guess believe it yes I don't know. and and i would even argue no matter where you get your source double check always yeah. double check your sources oh so this this particular story out of sacramento police say that two teens were shot dead after being confronted by an occupant of the home they allegedly tried to burglar burglar rise i read good it's happened before, so she's pretty shaken up about the incident that's been going on, said a neighbor who didn't want to be identified. 
According to the Sacramento De Police Department, officers were called to the 1000 block of Arcade Boulevard around 12.18 a.m. Sunday for a robbery in progress. Once at the scene, however, officers found that two young men had been shot dead. I can understand standing your ground. You have intruders. You want to at least neutralize them, if if not get them off your property. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And according to what I've read so far, the cops were called. And the cops were en route. And by the time they get there, those kids are dead. I think yeah. I think that's a little bit too much force. I mean, if you must if you must have a gun and and you must feel you must use it to stand your ground, what's wrong with non-lethal force? Cuz I don't know about you, but unless you're like a hardened military badass and even then you never know, if you're shot in the leg, that pain is probably going to be so great that you're not going to want to do anything else. And if you're a teenager, Who's never been shot before? Most likely, that's, that's yeah. It, it would be like getting hit in the nuts for the first time. It's just you yeah. can't concentrate on anything else. You are effectively neutralized. And while while the burglar is grabbing his leg in pain, you could be tying him up. You can call. You have the cops being called. You you can further neutralize the situation because they're not going to fight back. They're sitting there grabbing their leg and crying for mama. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it is. Just unfortunate how quickly some people jump to the the notion of, like, well, this person is doing this horrible thing. This person is, you know, attacking me, they're assaulting me, they're robbing me or whatever. So that gives me jurisdiction to just straight up fucking kill them. Yeah, it, it's, it's, ah, uh, what was that, that equal, equal force thing or whatever it's supposed to be called? I, I... I get the idea. I forget the name of it, but it's like if somebody comes at you with a punch, you punch them back. If nobody's trying to physically harm you and you need to neutralize the situation, then you know, just don't outright kill them. Like I, like I mentioned, go back and you know shoot them in the leg or in the arm, something that will stop them and make them bleed on the floor and call for mama. Yeah, shoot them in the foot. That'll keep them from going anywhere. Yeah, because you're not gonna well foot leg. Either way, you're not walking very far. If you yeah, want it's all. hard to say because, you know, this is two teenagers breaking into the home of, you know, elderly people. Yeah. So, you know, what they considered more of a threat may, you know, may have been different than what you and I would consider a threat because we have more of an ability to fight back. Yeah, this is true. Uh, but even even the elderly obviously was able to... You know, able to shoot and shoot to kill and did kill. So I guess, I guess it would in that kind of a case it would be kind of a, a set by set basis. But I still think that you know outright killing the teenagers would is a little too far. I mean, if you must. Well, shoot... I, the thing is, you don't know that that was intentional either. True. Yeah. What we know is that they were shot. Yeah. But we don't know where the guy was aiming. All right. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully the guy was trying to aim for the leg and just, you know, for whatever reason. I, I say guy, up. just there, there hasn't been any sort of confirmation about who actually fired the gun. But um, right. just because he, um, this is the home of his sister, who was the elderly woman who lived there. Um, yeah. And so it, it seems just more likely that it was probably him. Yeah, I, I, I would I would tend to agree with that one. So and and even with again like like I went back you know shoot the fucker in the leg, your aim could be really that far off or somebody could just you know bend down or whatever and right as you're firing right. the gun. Well, and I mean boom. even if you shoot someone in the leg, you could still hit an artery and they bleed out. So yeah, so right, there is yeah. there is a risk there as well. Uh, better alternative: get a taser <laughs> <laughs> or some mace or something. You know something something less lethal than a gun. Yeah, like or less a, potentially like, lethal. Like a pellet gun or a riot gun or something. I don't even know if, you, if civilians can get those, but... Yeah. I mean, you know, something that shoots like a, you know, a beanbag or like a... You know, like a, a really thick mm -hmm. rubber pellet. Yeah, or something that, Yeah, or a BB gun or something. I mean, but then again, you know, that's just going to rankle the chains of people who be like, but I deserve lethal force to be able to protect my home. You, you know what? Lethal force should be a last resort. 
I mean, if you have it there, understand that unless somebody is trying to actively kill you or otherwise harm you to the point that 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 you're you're going to be fucked up for life and in you know physically fucked up for life, then mm. you know you don't need the lethal force. Have it as a backup. Have it as a last resort if nothing else works. But you know, otherwise, don't let that. Don't make that be the first thing you go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it says here, like at the bottom of the article, it says police have not released the names of the teens who were killed, but say they do not believe they were armed. So that you know, I mean, it says it doesn't doesn't believe they're armed, so it's not confirmed whether or not they are armed. But still, I mean. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things that I'm honestly I think it could have happened just so fast that they you know like went down into the wherever these kids were, like brandished the gun and then just sort of without thinking pulled the trigger. Yeah, so, yeah, I think so too. This is the second time that this house has been burglarized. Um, so apparently, the at least one of the boys had been to this house before, and. Um, successfully got away and then went back with this friend of his. Yeah. Um, but this, uh, and I wish I could find the video that I saw of it, but um, it showed the amount of crimes in the area and it's a lot. <laughs> so it's a high crime area. Yeah. 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 Which... So it is understandable that you would maybe want to have something like that on hand. In case they decide to burglarize your home and bring a gun along with them. So, you know, there is, you know, there's a certain amount of understanding that goes into that. But, again, like, lethal force should be kind of a last resort. Yeah, have have something less lethal. Hell, have a sword on hand. I have two. <laughs> it may not help much if they have a gun, but if you if you surprise them, hey, I've, I've heard of kids... You know, holding guys at sword point, waiting for the cops to get there. So, it, it, if you do it right, it's less lethal. They're not going to want to move because if you do it right, they move. They get neck full of sword. Not then that's the last thing they seem to want. Yeah, least, that's the last thing I would want. So <laughs> it's less lethal, and if it is lethal, it's the robber's fault. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and. With this, we, we're tying into this article that I found off of conservativeinfidel.com, and I think I know how I found it because one of the top comments is actually a friend of mine on Facebook. Uh, uh, so yeah, so that that's probably how I could tell where I got it from. And um, and, and, if, and if this particular comment of hers has any bearing, I'll probably read that. Uh, but uh, when. MRC TV's Dan Joseph talked with prosecutors outside of the National Rifle Association's headquarters in Fairfax, Virginia earlier this week. He was able to really encapsulate the anti-gun crowd's argument against the Second Amendment. And and I didn't even go with the headline. The headline reads, Anti-NRA protester explains why you shouldn't be able to protect yourself with a gun if your life is in danger. Um, yeah, I, I have a feeling there is some spin on this one, if it's not satire. So it's either spin or satire. It's one of those two S words. When, yeah. Yeah. When asked if a person who believes their life is in danger should be able to defend themselves with a firearm, one protester simply said, no. Only a law enforcement officer should be allowed to use weapons, she said. Um, I'm going to put that firmly in the no. No, they yeah. should not. Because if the cops get all power crazy, which you see a lot of news stories where cops go power crazy over different things, you need to be able to defend yourself from them just as much as they need to defend themselves from criminals. And unfortunately, that's the way it's going with unless the power gets checked and you have to be able to check it. That's isn't that one of like the things about the government even, you know, have checks and balances within the power. That's why we have three branches of government. Despite what that fucking squatter over in Nevada is saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. So I mean, so the check, you know, you have the power of the police, and then the check and the balancing, it would be citizens that ain't going to take shit if the cops do something wrong. Or at least that's yeah. how it should be. No, I I, well, I agree. 
Yeah, see, I wouldn't. <laughs> uh -oh. Um, oh. I, I don't think that the public needs and should ever need to arm themselves against the police. Yeah. Um, now, do I think that gun control to the point of taking guns out of everyone's hand is the answer? No. I think that is a foolish idea because the fact of the matter is people who want to get guns will get guns. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. You know, they don't need to, to find the legal way to do it. Does it make it easier for them? Sure. Um, but do I think that it would make enough of a difference? No. But, you know, part of the checks and balances with the police system is the, the legal system and the judicial, judicial branch. And, eh, I cannot talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what I'm saying? Yes. So, you know. Yeah. It makes sense. That's, that's why it exists and that's why you have a, a trial and all of that. Um, you know, does that mean that some police get out of hand sometimes? Yes. Um, but I don't think the point of arming yourself should ever be to defend yourself against the people who are supposed to protect you. Yeah. And, and that, so, I, yeah, I, that I would I, agree I, with. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I don't think that people should be arming themselves strictly to, you know, say like, well, I'm going to go against the police because they obviously don't represent my best interests. I mean, that might be true for some police officers, but I mean, I want to believe that, you know, a, a good majority of them actually do want to, you know, serve and protect. Uh, but I think that, you know, in general, citizens should have the right to arm themselves with appropriate, you know, and, and reasonable measures, you know, to to make sure that they themselves are protected in case the police are actually not <clears throat> doing their jobs and are not making it, people feel safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it could come from anybody. It could come from a criminal. It could, it, unfortunately, sometimes it could come from, from a police officer, which means the police officer is not doing his job. Uh, so it kind mm -hmm. of, kind of all works right. together there. And, well, and that's why and I understand mentioned... where it's this elderly woman was coming from, you know, it, actually her house had been broken into two times before that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and this was the third time and it's like, yeah, she didn't feel safe in her own home. Mm -hmm. And I, and I really blame her at that point for having a weapon. If all yeah. of these break-ins were happening all around her and her own home had been broken into twice. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I could understand that as well. I mean, I would have, Again, as I was mentioning earlier, something maybe a little less potentially lethal, but, you know, if you, that's all you can get, that's all you can get. Yeah, and it's okay. not like she was just sitting around, you know, waiting to be able to fire her weapon at someone. You know, she was trying to sell her house. She was trying to get herself out of this situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's understandable. Very much so. Oh, so where was I in this article? Oh, right. <laughs> The same woman also told Joseph that he shouldn't be able to carry a gun in a bad neighborhood because he shouldn't be walking around in a bad neighborhood in the first place. Really? Wow. So That's advice to live by right there. Logic, guys. If you have to live in a bad area because it's less expensive, um, you shouldn't well, have, you shouldn't defend yourself because it's totally your own fault for living in a bad area. Oh, Sucks totally. Sucks to be you that you were you know given this lot in life. Yeah, it, it's like, oh, god damn. Another protester claimed that 30,000 people die every year to gun violence, and it's all the NRA's fault. Okay, I, I, I will bitch about the NRA. I will, I will, you know, if they pull some bullshit, I will call it out. Oh, but yeah. I mean, I, if I can just go off on a, on a slight tangent here. Go for I, it, man. I have extraordinarily little respect for the NRA. Simply because they're pushing a lot of really regressive policies. They um, are just really backwards in, in their ways of a lot of their ways of thinking. And just given the fact that they're still hosting people like Rick Santorum and Sarah Palin at their you know their rallies. Yeah. And Jesus, I got so mad when Sarah Palin went up to speak and talked about how she, you know waterboarding is baptizing terrorists. Oh, I heard about that. It's like really. I, I was, like, ready to just reach through the screen and choke a bitch. I was so mad. <laughs> yeah. That is the woman who came from my state and continues to more or less represent it. 
I mean, in the in the larger public eye, nobody really thinks about anything else besides Sarah Palin as being Alaskan now, and that's so horrible. Oh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh God, that feels, I feels mean, I feel so bad. It's like, I mean, you, you, you toss her somewhere else. Toss her, uh, I don't know, North Dakota. They don't have anything going on. Toss Sarah Palin. That'll that'll bring in some kind of notoriety to them. What what do we have that... in North Dakota? Not to make your life more difficult, Gomer, but send her down to Florida. That's where she belongs. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, at the very least, in the summer, she'll fit in with all of the, you know, spring break and summer, she'll fit in with all the other people at the beaches in the bikinis. Uh, yeah. Because anyway, I'm pretty Gomer. sure she would be. She would be one of those <laughs> in the bikini. But yes. Yeah. Uh, so. Where were you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. People who go out and buy a bunch of guns are just paranoid and misinformed, a female protester argued. And they, they have a video here entitled, What Triggers the Protest of a Protest of the NRA? To round out the thing there, but paranoid and misinformed, people who buy a bunch of guns. Um, there may be gun collectors. It does happen. My dad has a few. He doesn't really use them, but you know, they just kind of sit there. I have a couple of swords. You know, they just kind of sit there. We're not really doing anything with them. My dad doesn't go to a range and target practice or anything. And yeah. I, haven't, I haven't brought out and looked at my swords in oh, a couple of years because they've been here the entire time. So, you know, we're, we're not really paranoid or misinformed. At least I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume my dad is not either. But if then again, my dad is also former military. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, and yeah, he was a recruiter, but he still has the knowledge and the know-how to really fuck up a motherfucker if somebody was to try and rob this house. Not to mention, yeah. they'd have to go, not to mention, I'm pretty much the front line. I'm in the front bedroom here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, I, I, but I'm also, you know, a little craft, probably, I'd like to think I'm a little craftier and could probably do it non-lethally and defend myself if possible. Yeah. Um, but I mentioned earlier that a friend of mine is t- one of the top commenters on this, and she says, and I quote, Right, because an armed burglar is going to wait to shoot you until the cops get there to possibly defend you. Stupid bitch. And that is not me calling my friend that. That is what she said. Wow. Literally. So it's well, like, eh, yeah, because you know, that assumes that all burglars are going to have a gun. As as we noted with the teen burglars, they mo- they probably didn't in that case. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, burglars they may have a knife, sure, and that's a little bit easier to disarm. It's still painful if you fail, but not necessarily fatal, more often than not. But he, he's just. Uh... Again, I don't know. Yeah, just calling uh, people to go out and buy a bunch of guns. I mean, paranoid is probably – it's closer to to the truth than I think misinformed is because yeah, I think like, the people who go out – Yeah, like, what misinformed about? That's the part I don't get. I mean, yeah, it's like, you know, they, they, they hear that people, you know, get, get robbed, they get burglarized, and sometimes the cops aren't really that effective, and sometimes the cops actively work against you. So they probably feel it's, you know, a right of theirs to defend themselves. And, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, getting a collection of guns. I don't think there's anything – really wrong with having, you know, a collection of guns. I just think that, you know, you just need to be, you just need to know how to use them. You need to know what they do, how they fire, how they work, you know, how they get, how they're cleaned, how everything, so that you don't just, like, grab it off the shelf and then wildly spray bullets into, like, the darkness when you hear a bump in the night. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, like, if you had to take a class to, to be able to own a weapon, I would be totally okay with that. That's what I. Shit. I mean, we've got classes for everything else. We have classes for driving. We have classes for childbirth. We have parenting classes. Why not a gun handling class? If we don't have those already, I I want to say some places probably do. That's just, you know, it just makes the most sense to me. And you would think, at least down here in the south and in other areas where there are a bunch of people that like to have them guns, then, you know, you would have some kind of a gun class of some sort mm-hmm. you know at least a place where you could go and and target practice you'd think but i mean it just seems like there are so many people out there who just go and get themselves like 
you know, an M, an M14 or something, or, or yeah, I'm sorry, I I don't I don't dick about guns, so <laughs> I might mess up a few names here, but just go out and you know buy one illicitly because uh, it's my right to defend myself, and I'm going to get me this automatic weapon that can kill anything within two seconds, so I'm protected now. Yeah, except, see, you have the right to protect yourself. That doesn't necessarily mean guns. And the right to bear arms doesn't necessarily extend only to guns. It, it The Second Amendment is, you know, bear arms. That's pretty much any kind of weapon you can think of, you know. Right, I and mean, when the... And when the Second Amendment was written, you know, the only really guns that existed were muzzle loaders that took like 15 seconds to load and fire. Yeah, and and I would think, and, and okay, I'm going to brace for hate mail, maybe, but maybe uh, introduce an amendment that would kind of maybe refresh and clarify the Second Amendment a little bit more, refine it a little bit more. It's like, yeah, you have the right to bear arms as long, you know, you know, like reasonable arms or or or, or something like that. Or if yeah. you or if you want to be a jackass, you could just make it okay. The only way you can bear arms is if you have bear arms on the wall. <laughs> yeah, but um, also I, I mean I I know a lot what a lot of people's opinions on Michael Moore are, and I have my own opinions on the man. But there's a scene in Bowling for Columbine where he he's talking to uh was it James Nichols, one of the guys who was uh eventually acquitted in the Oklahoma bombing, um. And he was talking about the whole right to bear arms thing, and he said, like, well, what does that extend to? Weapons-grade plutonium? Yeah. I mean, can you have an atomic <laughs> bomb in your house? Is that what bear arms, you know, the right to bear arms mean? I mean... Yeah, where do you draw then, a line? Yeah. And then Michael's like, well, what do you think it should be? I mean, uh, do you think it should extend to that? Do you think there should be some restrictions? It's like, some. I mean, there's wackos out there. Yeah, and, and there's even cities out there that... If you have, I, I, I want to say, like, an atomic bomb or something like that, or if you set it off in a city or something, you're just fined, like, 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you set off an atomic bomb? Yes. Wow. <laughs> it's like, well, you just destroyed about a billion dollars worth of property and took 50,000 lives. <laughs> I hope you got the $20 to cover that, my boy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I I want to say it was somewhere in California that was that was like that. I'm not sure. Um, dumblaws.com. Look it up. <laughs> that's, that's that's where it's most likely at. Oh, but but okay. uh, yeah, with the whole NRA protesting and everything, there's one other story that I've brought up here, out of uh, NBCMiami.com. And despite the fact that this is based, the, the site and the news station is based in Florida, it talks about a protest in uh, Indianapolis. So, no matter what, it involves a place where I have resided. God damn it. Mm. As the crowd in Indianapolis at the annual National Rifle Association convention was whipped up into a frenzy, an anti-NRA protest was going strong. Of Oh yeah, it's Indiana. Ugh, because, yay! You have, you have the, it's a red state. What can I say? Yeah. Uh, but to be fair, the people are generally friendly. Yeah, like in most red states. So, I'm a gun violence survivor, Kate Ranta told uh, NPC6's Ari Odzer via Skype. Kate survived a bullet-riddled nightmare 18 months ago in Coral Springs. Police said Ranta's estranged husband, Thomas Maffei, ignored a restraining order and shot her and her father while their little boy watched. Oh, God. That's awful. Yeah, yeah. My son was saying, don't do it, Daddy. Don't shoot, Mommy, she said. She said of the fateful night. Her son chimed in. I stopped him. Hmm. How did he well, stop him, I wonder? I don't know. Probably by saying that, I guess. Maybe, uh... I hope so. <laughs> I, I, I would hope so, that the father, like, yeah, realized exactly what he was doing when he heard his son pleading to, to save his mom's life. Or to spare his mom's life, rather. Yeah. And Kate and her son have joined the, those protesting the NRA in Indianapolis. They're part of a group called Every Town for Gun Safety, and Ranta is featured in the group's television ad in which gun victims speak quotes from gun lobby leaders. One of the quotes used, There is no victory until we get guns in school to protect ourselves. We will buy more guns than ever. These words were said by the gun lobby, but they don't speak for us. Guns in school! Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> that'll, think... that'll work out, yeah. Yeah, that'll let's... 
well. Let's arm all of the teachers and all things of the that students. aren't a good idea. Yeah, it's just no. I mean, let I mean even take a part of the, the fact that I I think on a on a more recent what the fuck it was it was kind of brought up a little bit, and I, I want to say it was a. Uh, uh, Charlie McMullen, who had said that, yeah, you know, having a teacher with a gun, you know, you're just one bad day away from like shooting people up or something like that. Um, and there is that, but there's also if you give one to a teacher that is generally clumsy, and the gun falls the wrong way, yeah, somebody's gonna get shot on accident. Yeah, just... and also if the if there's like one person who just decides, or if, 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 even if that yeah that happened, if it was an accident that it went off or the teacher for whatever reason decided to actually fire their gun then that's just going to set everybody else off that you know all the other teachers are going to hear the gunshots they're all going to get out their guns and they're all going to go roaming through the halls looking for other people with guns yeah it's just it, it, it's it's going it would turn into a clusterfuck which would, yeah which i found i found an infograph i think it was on uh, tumblr of the percentage of people of like students that are likely to go to school armed and interestingly enough, it's not the bullies. It's the ones who were bullied because they don't feel safe. Yep. Yeah, I mean, so, unless I'm mistaken, that was what happened with, uh, you know, Dylan Harris and Eric Klebold. Mm -hmm. Or or Eric, it was Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, I'm sorry, the the Columbine kids who... Yeah, I know who you mean. I don't yeah. remember who had what last name, though. Yeah, but uh, those those two, I mean, from what I understand, they were experiencing some bullying, too, or they were they felt like they were... You know, just generally disenfranchised, and that just set them down an you know anarchistic path. Yeah, because it's like okay, you know, the system is not helping us. We do not feel safe within this system, so we have to take matters into our own hands. Right, and it's a absolutely horrible thing that they did, but you yeah. know, and I mean, I can't I can't say that I I agree with it at all, but it's no. it's one of those things that if you look at it that way, you think well, I mean. If if somebody had a fragile psyche and uh, just got you know continually set off by this by these things happening to them and found somebody else who was like minded, then yeah, you know, that's just that's the thing that can happen. Yeah, and, and 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 a small tangent on this one too because I remember when it first happened, there was like this story about this one girl who was asked if she believed in God. She said yes, and then she was like shot in the head or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I I since learned that. No, no, I don't. That that really didn't happen. You know, she was killed, I believe, but but it wasn't for that. I think she was just yeah. one of, a random victim, which is unfortunate. And of course, that's a whole another tangent for another show. Yeah. Uh, but back. To I just the think about how awful it, that tragedy would have been had there been more people with weapons. It's yeah. like. You know, if there's all of this chaos and people are running around and trying to hide, what are the yeah. chances that you're going to be able to run and fire your weapon and hit your target and not anything else at the same time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, when there's that much commotion and chaos, there, it's it's impossible for someone innocent not to get hit in the crossfire. And, yeah. Right, yeah. and if you know, if you are trying to hide while also trying to fire your weapon at somebody, how do you know that you're firing your weapon at the person who started the shooting? How do how are you going to know that you're not shooting at another teacher who is also trying to hide? Exactly. You know? Just <sighs> yeah, they've got, uh, uh, and you know, like also if you know if kid if the kids like hear gunshots and. Then they just start, you know, running through the halls because they're, you know, scared and terrified. And then they see like a teacher just come barreling down the hall with a gun because they're, you know, they're set off and they're uh, worried or like trying to defend. Then that's just gonna, you know, the kid's probably not going to be thinking too clearly and is probably going to think, "Holy shit, that person wants to kill me." Yeah, just just a little bit. Yeah, it's traumatic enough, and then you add that to it, and. Uh... And it's like, then who do I trust? Where do I go now? I mean, like, are the teachers the one who set this off? I mean, did did it was it a student? I mean, who's on my side now? I know, right? Uh, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it. I guess it just sort of reminds me of, and I hate to use this phrase because it has become so cliche, but going postal. You know, 
Yeah. Postal workers would just get stressed out and not be able to handle it and go in and shoot up post offices. So yeah. what's to say that that's not going to happen to a teacher if you alarm, allow them to arm themselves in school? Yeah. That's just, oh. And, and Kate said, back to the article here, Kate said what she's fighting for is simple. Universal background checks is just a no-brainer. Agreed. You yeah. Know, you go through the legal channels. Obviously, there are going to be people that slip through the cracks and go through illegal channels. That That's not what we're going for here. We're going for people who go through the legal channels to get a gun who really should not have a gun. Yeah. You know. I mean, because that, that – people always talk about how, you know, government – you know, background checks and all that are just, you know, it's the government out, you know, reaching out and trying to control all of, you know, the aspects of how you can live your life, what you can own. And it's just like, no, a background check is an extremely useful tool because it's checking to see if you have a criminal history, if you have a history of mental illness. And if all of that put together leads to like, well, what's this person going to do with a gun? Yeah. Are they going to just keep it in their home and defend themselves? I mean, are they going to make the effort to go out and get a concealed carry permit so that, you know, they can defend themselves in public if need be? Or are they just going to, you know, go running around the back alleys with it, you know, like they're Yosemite Sam? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's why, you know, you, you hit the nail on the head, why background checks are a necessity. I mean, hey, if yeah. we have to get background checks to in order to work somewhere, then why not one for a gun? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just... Yep. Uh, yeah, and Rantis yeah, said, to go, oh, "I'm sorry." I was just saying, yeah, if you if you have to go through the the DMV to get uh, a you know a license to drive your car, then I don't see why you should why why you shouldn't be issued a license that says you can own, operate, and c- keep this this firearm in proper working condition. Yeah, and... yeah. Well, especially because the purpose of a gun is to injure someone or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's the that's the one thing about this whole debate uh, that really just pisses me off when people try and say like, oh well it's, guns are just tools. Guns are just, you know, tools like uh like hammers or, or, or forks or something. It's just like are you fucking kidding me? Have you seen the editorial um, of a guy who wrote in and I think this was just like a joke that was going around and then somebody submitted it to a newspaper like it was a real thing. Um, but oh, there's no. this guy who who gets out of his shotgun and he loads it and he puts it on his front porch. Mm. Goes about the rest of his day and just leaves the gun there. Uh-huh. And, yeah. you know, mail gets delivered, the kids play in his yard, whole day goes by, gun never shoots anybody. He's like, either um, people... Firing guns are the ones that, you know, kill people. Or I have the laziest shotgun in existence. <laughs> I oh, that's such a hor- horrible misrepresentation of the argument. Yeah, it's just, I mean, because yeah, a gun is not going to just go off if you leave it sitting where it is. I mean, I don't know if it's if it's in poor working condition, and you know, then maybe it might. But no, I mean, like. Yeah, obviously the people behind the guns are the ones who pull the trigger. They're the ones who aim them where they're, you know, shot. And they're the ones who are ultimately responsible for what happens. Doesn't mean that a gun's primary purpose is not to injure slash kill something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing that can be said about this whole argument. It's like, yeah, a gun might be a tool, quote unquote, but it's still a tool for injuring slash killing. Yeah. It's not a fork whose whose primary purpose is to put food in your mouth. Yeah. It can kill you, but that's not its primary function. Yeah, a gun's primary function, point, aim, pull the trigger, it goes boom, and then something over there, unless you're a horrible shot, will 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 just go poof, whether yeah. it's whether it's a dude or a tree. Yeah, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It is. Uh, but so. Ranta Ranta said her husband shouldn't have had a gun the night he shot her and her father. Something like common sense gun laws would have prevented him from getting a gun and possibly taking out three generations of my family, Kate said. Yeah, common sense if, if the guy – again, going back to the background checks. <laughs> yeah. 
If, if mm -hmm. it's mo if it seems likely that this guy is going to shoot up people for whatever reason, then take the gun away. You take right. it away. You know, you might have to go through a few people because he's a crazy man with a gun. He might shoot you while you try to take it away, but you take the gun away. Yeah. Uh, uh, exactly. Yeah. The Every Town for Gun Safety group is being bankrolled by billionaire former city New former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who has made gun control his cause after leaving office. Bloomberg has pledged $50 million to supporting gun control. That's pretty nice. Yeah. Still, at the NRA convention, a who's who of Republicans lined up to speak to the gun group. Oh, a who's who spoke to the gun group. Blah. I, I read good today. Hmm. Sort of fr Florida Senator Marco Rubio... Who was among the speakers and said the media and gun control advocates use tragedies to push an anti-gun agenda. And you don't use tragedies to push your agenda? Are you fucking oh. kidding me? Right. God, well, yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's exactly what this woman is doing, too. She's saying, oh, you know, look, and, you know, let's put guns in schools to prevent tragedies. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, also and... like saying, don't take guns to school to prevent tragedies. Like it's like it goes both uh, ways. And yeah. yeah, and you made a very good point, Gomer, when you talked about how it's like, oh well, you guys aren't using these tragedies to push your agenda. And it was like when when Wayne Lapierre, uh, you know, spoke in front of the N NRA after uh, Newtown, and you know was like crying and was like, oh, this is so tragic that this could have been avoided if only the, the schools had more guns in them. Yeah, I mean, okay, a tragedy. And if you want to make things better, yes, you are going to have to use a tragedy, at least as a talking point to see this is an example of why things need to change. And and and, and in that case, using a tragedy to further an agenda of, of sorts, quote unquote agenda, then, you know, that's one thing, you know, is yeah. basically looking back and saying, this is what we need to prevent in the future. This is where we fucked up. Let's fix it. And make it to where this doesn't work like this anymore, to where this is more rare, to where yeah. we don't have to worry about this several times a year. Maybe once a decade would be better. It would be better if it never happened again, but the reality is it probably will, but it would happen with a lot less frequency if we have things like the universal gun checks. If we made it harder – I say harder, but harder to get guns – Legally, you know, you have to go through a bit more paperwork, especially if you are insane. And there's the other end of it as well: mental health checks. If people would yeah. take like the whole mental instability thing a little bit more seriously, especially with people who might go and shoot up schools, that would be another big step towards getting things under control. No pun intended. Well, even like the <sighs> the theater shooting, um, where it was like. You know, yeah, he had obtained his gun illegally. Okay, yeah, that's what more could you have done in that situation? Mental right. health checks, yeah, it might have caught it. But uh, how come the fact that he just bought a bunch of ammo didn't tip anyone off? Yeah, it's like, hi. You know, you need my driver's license information for me to buy cough medicine. Yeah, <laughs> but why ammo? isn't there some sort of government reporting for buying ammunition? That's yeah, actually and if there, a good if point. there is, the then. I would love for somebody to let me know that, but yeah. as far yeah, as I know. A, a gun by itself is only a fairly, you know, effective short range bludgeoning weapon. A gun with ammo is not. It yeah. is much more lethal. So it's like, you know, that Chris Rockman, I think there shouldn't be gun control, there should be bullet control. You should, you know, be charged an insane amount on bullets because then nobody's just gonna go and randomly shoot a bunch of people because it's like, well fuck, I paid like Fifty thousand dollars for this stock of bullets I have. Yeah, we don't, I don't want to waste that money. I'll waste it on like shooting fucking deer. And, and, and yeah. it's like it's like better to go and shoot something that you're likely to eat or use an animal parts out of than go and shoot other people just for the hell of it, or just because you're butt hurt about something, or because of this or that or the other. There are other ways to deal with it than pop a cap in somebody's ass. Just better yeah. ways of dealing with it. Huh. So, uh, but Rubio, oh, fucking Rubio. Meanwhile, these anti-gun zealots use these tragedies further to our agenda. We neglect to pursue the thing that would actually make our people safer. And knowing you with your anti-gun stance, let me let me guess. What were we what were we singing? Oh yeah, more guns. 
because that's the way you solve a problem, right? You have a problem with guns. Let's throw more guns at it and see what happens. Two wrongs yeah. make a right, don't they? <laughs> no, they don't. You're... <laughs> You're addicted to cocaine? Here, take this out and do something with it. I don't care. Right. It's just, no. You, you gotta go, you gotta deal with it in a different way. Yeah, you know, guys, education... this, this isn't math. Two negatives don't make a positive here. This exactly. Is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's still negative in the end. Very much yeah. so. And, and one of the biggest things, you know, I, I think we've covered it, you know, throughout the show. Education is a very important tool as well. Educate the people, proper gun use, what will happen if, if you use the gun the wrong way, what could happen to you if you fuck up doing using the, the gun the wrong way, as in like, you know, you look down the barrel of the gun to see if there's a gun in the chamber and you pull the trigger. You know? Because there are some people who might be that stupid and need to be told, yeah, do not do that. It will not be like the cartoons. You will likely not survive it. It, it you know, and if you do, your eyeball will not. Mm. Uh, and and just a little thing at the end of the article. Other key GOP figures that were expected to speak include former Senator Rick Santorum, Governor Bobby Jindal of Louisiana, <clears throat> and Governor Mike Pence of Indiana. Well, of course, the go of course the governor of Indiana is going to be there. It's right there in his goddamn city. Yeah. So if he didn't speak there, you know, he would either be a, a Democrat or b, you know, it, it would just it would just be weird, just just weird. Ah. So with all all this gun talk, to kind of sum up everything as we've talked about, um, gun control, yes, a control, mm -hmm. not a. Not an outright ban on guns in general. Of course, certain guns. Why the fuck do? Why the fuck? Like, like, why the fuck would I need an RPG? For example, yeah. I wouldn't need that. I don't want that. You know, I mean, I wouldn't mind having something that I could just like throw across the way, watch it go boom because explosions are fun. But I don't need an RPG. For one thing, the the kickback has got to be hell. Yeah. Huh. That's... <laughs> Oh, and, that, and that will throw off your aim, and, and and of course, when your aim is thrown off, you don't know what will happen. If you shoot an RPG, you might destroy your neighbor's house three blocks away. Yeah, and, what do you really need to blow up that badly? I know, right? I mean, that's that's why you have firecrackers. That's why you have like like you know like little M80s and shit. You know, you blow up the small things. You know, you see mm -hmm. you see you see like a dead tree or something. <laughs> blow right, it up. Kids. Appreciate blowing up the small things in life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the the small harmless things. Let let me you know. Well, that 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 makes me no, sound worse. No, don't blow that up makes small me... harmless things, kid. No, that's don't that's do not that. okay. Okay, small inanimate things. Inanimate. <laughs> that's where I need to go. Because right. yeah. if, if you make a house out of popsicle sticks and you want to blow it up, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't decide that you want to go grab an RPG later in life and try that on your neighbor's house. Yeah, please don't. Your neighbors will not appreciate it. And no, probably not. No. And and don't stick, like, millions of tons of dynamite just to blow up a whale, a, a beach sperm whale. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> awesome that so as funny. that was, don't do that. <laughs> they well, were professionals. You know, there's, yeah... There's a purpose behind doing that, and yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, we can't move it, so let's blow it the fuck up. And, and at least, you know, at least, we'll, we, you know, yeah, we still have to clean up all the bits and pieces, and the car got, da got damaged to all total tell. But mm -hmm. at least still, those parts will be easier to move, and it will be easier to just, you know, buy the, other, buy the poor fucker a new car. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that, like explaining that to your insurance company. <laughs> well, a piece of dead whale fell from the sky. Yeah. <laughs> you just would look at you like you were on drugs. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck. I'd be like, no, really, it's it's on video. <laughs> yeah. It really was, too. <laughs> it's still sitting on the car. Do you want to see it? No, 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 no. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I can smell oh. you, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh god oh but to, to, to get back to to kind of summing up everything you know the education always a good thing you know mental health checks you know you having regular me mental health checks and a, a step towards that would be oh i don't know reducing or getting rid of the cost of health care 
you know. It makes me nuts that people get so defensive about things like mental health checks. It's like, if you don't have anything to worry about, then why are you making such a big deal out of it? Yeah, and if you do have something to worry about, like, like, and I don't, I don't mean like something on your conscience. That's, that's a whole different thing. Go see a priest for that. No. Uh, <laughs> but if you do have something to worry about that you think is going to affect things, why not go talk to somebody who could help you through this and get rid of the goddamn problem? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I admit, I, I have some things. I probably – it wouldn't hurt me to go and see a shrink for because I do have my own issues. They're not as pronounced because I, you know, I, I've dealt with it for years. One of the things that kind of keeps me from doing it is the fucking cost. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, I wouldn't mind it, but I'm po. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so making it to where it's easier for people to get that help with their mental problems. Even if all these people, even if all you need is just somebody to go to, that that's that that's kind of uh, a non-biased person that can sit and talk with you and just talk you through things without without any kind of connection emotionally or whatever, you know. So you, at least you would have that and have that for free without having yeah. to go to a bar and get drunk. You know, and, and you know what? Psychologists, they have to keep it between you and them unless it's like you know illegally. Un, 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 I think there are some circumstances where they can't, but I would say 95% of the time what you say in there is not going to leave that office. So yeah. your secrets are safe with them. Your secrets are safer, safer with them than they are with a priest. Because the priest is not bound by that. At least I don't think he is. But, yeah. Of course, we could engineer some of those silence from Doctor Who and, well, what was I talking about again? <laughs> I don't know. I think we were talking about guns. <laughs> yes, we were. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, of course, the, the background checks to check for mental stability, criminal history. You know, make yeah. it universal. It's like, it's like duh. Because I don't know about you, I don't want some guy that's been like – that's been to prison three times for shooting up convenience stores to be able to buy a gun from me or ammo. No. Yeah. I don't, I don't want you anywhere near a firearm at that point if that's the history you've had. Yeah. It's just no. <clears throat> I, I think at that point not any near not near any weapons in general. It's just, just back off. You know, You stay the fuck away from my swords and my knives and everything else. You just stop. Although, yeah. although some some of the criminals, if if they're without weapons or not able to get weapons, they do get creative. Like one guy that had like a toy gun or whatever, and he tried to rob a store, and the clerk behind the counter he had a gun, and he he, he looked at the the robber's gun, it figured out it was fake because of you know the type of gun it was supposed to be, and the hole that the bullet most likely would not be able to come out of. So he's fairly confident in this. And he's, he's like, that's not a real gun. Pulls out the gun. This is a gun. And the robber quickly shat his pants, tried to shield himself with the gummy bears, and then fled. <laughs> so, hmm. yeah. So Robert, so criminals, the, the, it's not going to deter crime. It'll deter the more horrible crimes. It'll deter the more fatal stuff. And again, there, and again, if somebody is... If somebody has the means and they have the determination, they are still able to get it illegally, which that's another issue all to itself. But in terms of just legally getting a gun, you know, have those checks in place. You know, if, if you have too much of a criminal history, violent criminal history, by the way, to, to kind of help clarify that a little bit, because if you're if you're if you have a rap sheet a mile long for like, you know, pot possession charges Odds are, I think that person's going to be safe with a gun. But on the other hand, if they shoot up people like every other month, you don't want them to have a gun. Yeah. Oh. So that, I hope, is a good summation of everything. <laughs> uh, I, I really hope that is. Oh. So at any rate, we're going to go ahead and get out of here for this time. Thank you guys for listening. Um... If we wanted to find Gonzo on the internet, where could we find him? You can find me on Tumblr and Twitter and YouTube uh, at Gonzo Link. And, announcement, I just started up my own podcast. 
Ooh. Yes, it's Focus on the Frames, hosted by myself and Zenith Will Rule. First episode is not out yet, but it, although it is recorded, and it should be out within the next uh, day or so, so look it out for that. All right, and where is it going to be posted at? Um, uh, it'll be hosted on uh, on Tumblr and on YouTube, on, on, on my own channel. But on Tumblr, you can find it at focusontheframespodcast.tumblr.com. Sweet! I'll have to keep an eye out for that. And where can we find Holly? I'm all over the social media as Gookie Gox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. So Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Um, and Facebook, my fan page is Holly Christine Brown, and I'm also over at Nerdvice. Yes, and speaking of Nerdvice, that is one of the places in which you can find me. And in addition to other places such as social media, Tumblr, Twitter, at Gomer21XX, you can also find my stuff at rtgomer.com, my own site, and at which you can also find stuff by a bunch of other people. Go check it out. And if you want to toss money at this, you know, to help us support for better equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash gomer21xx. I mentioned Becky's at the beginning of the show. Go check her out. Throw money at her, too. And because I don't remember if I did it when I recorded the Port Charlie podcast, I do have a new patron, uh, D.A. Scott Jr. Thank you very much. It, it Every little bit does help. Again, I don't remember if I mentioned it on the last one, but I'm doing it this time. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and if I did remember it, then uh, you get it twice. Congratulations. <laughs> oh. So once again, uh, the time – our time is a, like maybe a few minutes short, but that's okay because we're going to get out of here. We gave a lot of stuff to think about. And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.